I didn't grow up in a religious household, but I do appreciate what the church has added to Western culture, from the great music, to the beautiful architecture, to the smoking hot lesbian nuns. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Story of a Cloistered Nun from 1973. Ken Russell's The Devils, which I talked about here, is the film most responsible for kickstarting the nunsploitation subgenre of exploitation cinema. And while that film was pretty extreme and was, and to a certain extent still is today, heavily censored, there were other early nunsploitation films that took a less controversial approach to the subject matter while still ticking those exploitation boxes that we expect from the subgenre. This is one of those films, so let's check it out. After the, um, interesting credits, we open on two families placing two babies on a bed. The families are arranging a marriage between these two little ones, Carmela and Enrico. They even ask the babies if they agreed to the arrangement, and when they don't answer, the official allows their fathers to speak in their stead. And then it's many years later, and that baby girl is now all woman, and she's rolling around the grass with some boy. But that's Julian, not Enrico, the baby boy her family promised her to, and this will prove to be problematic. She tells her parents that she doesn't want to marry Enrico, but breaking that contract will bring great shame and humiliation to her family. And the only way they can avoid that shame is if Carmela becomes a cloistered nun. A cloister nun, by the way, is a nun who locks herself away from the rest of society in a cloister, uh, uh, a nunnery. So basically, Carmela will be a prisoner for the rest of her life. And since nuns are women, and this is a kind of prison, this is a kind of women in prison movie. In fact, many nunsploitation films, including this one, are a kind of women in prison film, and feature many of the same tropes we're used to from those movies. Cruel wardens, in a nunnery, this would be the mother superior or maybe a visiting priest, inmates who turn to lesbianism, beatings, perversity, backstabbing, you know, our kind of movie. So Carmela shows up and goes through the intake process, which, like most women in prison films, includes being stripped, the nuns doing the stripping like what they see, and so do I, but you can't see what we see here on YouTube. No fear. Carmela's then put in a small cell and told she has 30 days to memorize the rules of their order. She eventually breaks down under the stress of isolation, but is eventually let out. A few of the nuns give her some advice on which nuns are trustworthy and which are not. The Mother Superior is supposedly a very dangerous hypocrite, although she does seem nice enough at first. Carmela settles in, and eventually she asks how one can be expelled from the nunnery. And it turns out there is no way to be expelled from the nunnery. But she is told there are ways to leave, temporarily. But she's not ready for those secrets quite yet. One night, Carmela hears someone screaming. This scares her, and she leaves her cell to ask a friend what's going on. But one of the bad nuns sees that she has left her cell, and so Carmela is stripped and beaten. Some of the nuns seem to like the show. What's wrong with that? Eventually, Carmela is acclimated enough to be trusted with some of the nunnery secrets. The first one is that the nuns have a secret room where they have collected pretty dresses and jewelry and mirrors, and they like to dress up, drink wine, and act out romantic fantasies with each other. And you might be surprised to hear this, but parts of this I can't show you. Things get worse for Carmela when it's time for her to take her vows, and she refuses. This angers her father a great deal. He comes to her and tells her that this is the last time she will ever see him, and he has forbidden other members of the family from ever visiting her. And you know, I'm not entirely sure why Carmela doesn't just leave. But like I said, I didn't grow up in a religious house. Nearly everything I know about nuns is from movies like this. So most of my knowledge is about what two happy nuns can do together, not what a single unhappy one can do on her own. My God, man, you're either a damn fool or a sex maniac. So as far as I can tell, these nunneries really are kind of prison, or at least they were back whenever this movie takes place. But anyway, Carmela, with some help, does find a way out of the nunnery, at least temporarily, so she can visit with Julian. And I'm sure a cloistered nun getting down to business with an old love will have no bad consequences whatsoever. Oh, sure. But that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, this movie is pretty nice to look at. 
The cinematography does a good job of making the nunnery look small and cramped and old, but it's also filmed in an interesting way. Lots of shadows and nice use of foreground and background elements. At times, there's even some really nice shot framing. It looks pretty great all the way through. Add to that some cool costumes and some nice faces, and yeah, it's enjoyable to look at. Of course, you all are probably wondering if there are other nice things to look at, and there are. The highlight here, of course, is the lovely Eleonora Giorgi, the actress who plays Carmela. There's not a ton of nudity in this movie, but we do get to see her a few times, completely, and it's pretty great. And finally, I did find the story here to be pretty interesting. I wasn't aware of how prison-like these nunneries were back in the day. I don't know if the film is completely historically accurate, but I think it's accurate enough. As far as I can tell, it was possible for families to send their daughters to these prisons in certain cases. That's pretty wild. But despite being a pretty interesting story and Carmela looking great out of her habit, I wouldn't say this movie is perfect. Like nuns cosplaying romantic encounters, this film has some shortcomings. Well, if you're looking for some sleaze, you're kind of in the wrong place. This is more or less a serious film. Sure, it's got those exploitation elements we want from a movie like this, but not to the extent some of us might want. Beyond that, the first time I watched this, I was a little confused about who was who. I had a hard time telling some of the characters apart. When they're in their nun outfits, they all kind of look the same. They've got pretty faces, but, you know, pretty starts to look the same after a while. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm better at keeping track of other body parts? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But whatever. Overall, this would be a good starting point if you want to dip your toes into nunsploitation. It ticks most of the boxes without being overly controversial or sleazy. You could watch this one with your mom. Mm -hmm.